What's your favorite lunch? Oh, a turkey sandwich for sure. Obviously, I knew that. Obviously. With some chips. We were roommates. I know. I had they were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Kelly and I lived together in college for, what, two years? Two years, yeah. Two years. And then we've been doing best friendship long distance for two years. Well, I've been in school and you've been living in the Mechanicsburg. The fake bird. Yeah. Um, well, I think we did pretty well. We saw each other pretty often. We did, but I'm so excited to be here today to uh, wrap up 2019. I know. So this is our Christmas present to each other, right? Some quality time. Some quality time, <laughs> some quality content. <laughs> and uh, clearly the whole world to see. You. Obviously, but we're paying homage to our best two guys, right? Yeah. Chad and JT. What up, Chad? What up, JT? <laughs> what up, Stoke Nation? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you want to tell the Stokers why we're doing this? So we're doing this because we just, it's been a year. It's been a it's roller been coaster a of a year. Um, we both turned 25 and we just thought it would be a great time to just reflect on 2019. Mm -hmm. And when we were thinking about it, we're like, who didn't start a podcast in 2019, but should? It was us. It was us, yeah. We always said that in college, like, there should be a TV show. We're like, we should do a podcast, because we're funny. <laughs> we are funny, and our, our group funny of friends looking. are funny. <laughs> oh, funny looking. Bring it back. Boom, roasted. <laughs> <laughs> TVT. I know. Um... But we recently became obsessed with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Sure have. Shout out to Chad and JT. What up? Um, and we've been diving deep. Liana, I listened to some recent episodes, mm -hmm. told Liana about it. She went back and started listening to you. I went back the to early days. Episode one. Episode one. Before they even had sponsors. <gasps> Yeah. yeah, I think I like to start from the beginning. So I've been like, you know, every time I get in the car, I turn it on because I just want to, I want to go from the beginning. I want to see their, their the like evolution. arrival and yeah. their evolution to like where they are today. So I think it's been pretty fun because like even in the, I think 30 episodes that I've listened to, like you can already tell JT has a girlfriend. He didn't start with one. That was pretty cool. Um, got to meet Strider so far and Joe. Oh, you love and Joe Andrea, too. I love Joe. You texted me about Joe and you're like, I, I like, love him. Yeah, we're the same person. As much as I, so I haven't gotten as much as Liana because she drives a lot, yeah. but um, I haven't officially met Joe yet. I've seen him on Instagram because obviously when you deep dive, you go back through and you like get mm -hmm. to know them. And yeah. I think it's just funny, like, social media's role in, like, all of this because we feel like we know them, but I just think it's been fun to just, like, kind of unplug and hear what they have to say, and, you know, you drive so much, so why not laugh while you're doing it? Yeah, and I just love their outlook on life and how positive mm -hmm. it is. Um, one of the episodes I just listened to, they described Chad and JT as Chad was the ethos and JT oh, was the yeah. realness. And I think we have that in our friendship as well. Yeah, very yin and yang too. <laughs> so um, a week or two ago, we actually had a full conversation about who was who. Yep. <laughs> and we have uh, different aspects that we pull, but I think I would lean more JT. You would obviously lean yeah. more Chad. I'm just too chill for my own good. <laughs> <laughs> but on the surface, we both thought we were the opposite. Yeah, I would say so. Um, but it's just been a, a fun bonding experience. We thought we would bring that to this year and our fans. Yeah. 
So, and just kind of reflect back on 2019 and what it's meant to us, right? Yeah. So, what's been going on in 2019? All right. So, we were trying to think about, like, current events, you know, like, what this year has kind of not only meant to us, but some big things that have happened. The first thing that popped into my head is Disney Plus Whoa. kind of making its way to the map. How do you feel about that? Um, a streaming service. We excited about it. I I don't know if I thought about it that deeply because I'm kind of a mooch when it comes to different yeah. streaming services. So you haven't met a friend who has. Yeah, <laughs> so I haven't yeah. gotten into it yet. But I will tell you, I am excited for the Liz McGuire reboot. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. That's that so one's exciting. coming out. Um, there's a movie on there with Anna Kendrick that I want to see. It's a Christmas oh. movie. So basically, we just need to make lucrative friendships at this time. Yeah. This is 25, right? This is 25. <laughs> I'm just like, if someone... I'll I'll buy the account if other people pay me for it. I mean, that's what my friend Alexa and I do. Shout out to Alexa. What up? What up, Alexa? <laughs> but I've known her since, like, third grade. And I think it was freshman year at Messiah... We were like, what do we want to do for Christmas? So she literally just hands me a check for, like, half of it for the year. <laughs> and then we just still use each other. Like, we have – we're the only two people on the Netflix account. I mean, so many people use it. But yeah. it's fun, you know? Oh, my gosh. Do you want to go in on Disney Plus together? I think. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. We're solving all of the world's problems right now. Kelly all Solution. the world's problems. Um, also, I just heard recently that Instagram might take away likes. What do oh. you think about that? You know I have thoughts on that one. Yeah, tell me about it. Social media theme. Um, I actually agree with it. Okay, so, which is a hot take on this hot button topic. But the way social media is moving in the world, they're going less, I want you on the app all the time, and more I want to build community. And one of the things that breaks down community and breaks down positivity are the like counts. Like, when I post a picture... It's not necessarily to get the likes. For me, social media is a form of creative expression, especially on Instagram. You You know I love the feed. (laughs) Like, I'm not posting for my friends. I'm posting for myself. Right. Even though, like, my friends love my content. But I I appreciate them taking it away because it takes away that competition nature that social media could have, and it can be more of an art form. What are your thoughts on it? I, I, I agree with you. I think it's a good thing because, I mean, you think about, I mean, we're 25, but, like, think about us in high school. We didn't really have these issues with, like, comparing ourselves to one another, and I think there's so much stock put in how many likes you get for a picture, and, like, so many people delete pictures because they haven't oh, yeah. gotten enough likes, and I think that's sad to me because, like, oh, I'm not good enough, and I just, like, wonder if this will help kind of take that piece away of, like, mm-hmm. the competition between, like, the girl sitting next to you in math class, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like most people have Instagram, so they're affected by this in some way. I just wonder, like, what it'll do for, like, influencers. I don't um, really have that problem, but I just, like, They'll still wonder. be able to get analytics, probably. That's probably true. And you still get the likes. It's just not going to be shown. You just can't see it. Yeah. yeah, like, only the user can see them. It's like when Snapchat took away... Being able to see your best friend. Oh, Do you remember bro, that? that TBT. <coughs> yeah, that. Um, That's kind of what it makes me think of. Which yeah, was like true. the best thing that ever happened because I wouldn't say I'm a jealous person at all, but it was definitely like you would still look. Yeah, how can you not? You oh, know, for sure. Yeah, so that's interesting. Um, also, all things Taylor Swift happened this oh, year. Oh, all things Taylor Swift happened so, this year. So, I mean, for one, we bought tickets to go see Lover next August. Next <laughs> August. I don't think I've ever planned so we, far ahead. This would be like me planning my wedding. It's right. me going to Lover's Fest. Exactly. But we're going to Boston. We you are. haven't been to Boston, have you? I've never been to Boston. It's on my bucket list. I'm so well, pumped. I love Boston. I spent a summer like in Massachusetts, you know. Oh, right. Working at camp. Yeah. What up, camp? What up, camp? <laughs> that was the summer we became friends, actually. Yeah, like, that was like really our first tight. summer together. I was in Nashville. You were in Boston. And we missed each other. We that missed was each other so a sad. lot. We were also both so lonely that summer. Honestly, I've never been so lonely in my life. But Surrounded felt, by so many people. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that I was, felt so connected to you. <laughs> I know. But at least now we'll be able to change, like, how we feel about Boston, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for that. What else? She won Woman of the Decade. Woman recently. of the Decade at the Billboards yeah. and at the AMAs? No. Huh. We need a back she got, fact check right now. I know, right? I, she won so many awards. I think, did she win Album of the Year? I don't know. This is bad. Yeah, but this she is won. Really she was bad. nominated for everything. Honestly, she won album of the year in my heart. Right, and then her performance at what was this, the AMAs. Yes, was fab. So be- it made me cry. If I'm being 100 percent honest, I it was so up. good. That jacket with all the different and her piano with all her different album names on it. And uh, Missy Copeland dancing. Oh my gosh! I know. You as a former dancer, like, did that just warm your that heart really, to yeah. your favorite song? Right, that's your favorite song. Yes. the album. I know. I love that song. Yeah, it was. That was really cool to see because I feel like she scrutinized so much. And yeah. I would say, like, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, but I love rooting. I wouldn't even say she's an underdog, but I love rooting for, like, somebody that so many people are against, you know? Yes. And I think yeah. it's been really cool to see. I loved, in her billboard, um, she called herself the resident loud person, <laughs> which, like, I was like, oh, yes. But I think it was just cool, like, she said, you know, I spent so much time being what everybody said I couldn't be, but mm-hmm. I, in 2020, I'm just going to focus on what I want to be, basically. And I was yeah. like, yes, queen. Like, keep doing That's that. That's words to live by, for yeah. sure. So I think that was cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, let's talk about the Enneagram. Oh, the Enneagram hit hard. Yeah, 2019. I would say it's been, like, the bottom half of 2019. Yeah, it's been, like, the last six months I've gone in deep. Yeah. Going deep. Going deep. I said... That I think what did I say? I'm a two. Like I oh, took the test. Test. I took two different tests. And so let's clarify sure. though. You don't take the test to figure out your number. No. It's self determined. Yeah. But I took it because that's a lot of reading. <laughs> and I, yeah. But I think you can there are good resources out there. Great podcast. Shout out to oh, yeah. um Sleeping at Last podcast. Pretty good. And Love it because it ties in music and the Enneagram, which mm-hmm. clearly are my two loves, music and um, personality tests. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, I can guess anyone's Myers-Briggs. <laughs> and you you read a book recently, too, I right? am. Do yeah, I have one more chapter on it. Um, I think it's, like, The Road Back to You is oh, what it is by Suzanne Stable. Stable? Okay. Could be a misquote, but I bet you could just go <laughs> any other book and find one that has road in the title. Right. Um, it's really helpful. What I love most about it is because I've done a lot of research on the Enneagram. It's the chapters when they talk about the other numbers within it. So, like, you're mm, reading the chapter yeah. on a five, but it makes one comment about a three that I'm like, oh, I never thought of myself in that way. Um, I am a three, by the way. I don't think yeah. I said that. I think I screenshotted your Instagram story so that I could remember that you were a three, so that I could remember how to treat you. Yeah, I feel so. Every time I see something about a two, I think of you. I know. Well, there was this one. It was like, Martha is such a two from the Bible story. And I was like, I know. I'm Martha. Mm -hmm. Like, for those of you who don't know, it's the story about when Jesus comes to visit. Like, it's Mary and Martha. Yeah, Mary and Martha. And Mary is just like sitting at his feet, right? And is like just infatuated with everything Jesus has to say, but Martha's in the kitchen, like, making sure that everything is good to go, mm-hmm. that, like, he's comfortable. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's me. Like, yeah. that is me. And it's not because, like, I don't love that person and I'm not interested. It's because I love them so much that I want them to be comfortable. And I think that's just how my personality bends. And I just want to make sure that, like, everything's good to go and set. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh, Martha's such a two. Like, I just, I think about all the time. Yeah, it's like when uh, <coughs> you threw me my 25th birthday weekend, yeah. and you, like, didn't even hang out with us. You just, like, we're in the kitchen making food. Like, That's because no one else was going to make food. We either. were going to help you, but you were just all about it. But the kitchen's so small. It's okay. Which, I loved it. Yeah. That's me appreciating your two-ness. Yeah. I think that... This is, like, the first birthday I felt, you know? You felt old. I didn't even... It's not even that I felt old. It's just that I felt another year older. Like, when somebody's like, how old are you? I'm like, 
I'm 25, you know? Yeah. Like, it feels like such a big age, and everybody that's, like, over the age of 25 is rolling their <laughs> eyes at me right now. I was like, oh, I wish I could be 25. But, like, you know, after your 21st birthday. 25 is the next big yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Except for Taylor Swift's 22 birthday, but that was... We're not Taylor Swift. We're not I'm Taylor drinking Swift. my green juice. <laughs> <laughs> How are you liking that green juice? Oh, yeah. This oh, is yeah. actually pretty good. I was kind of stressed. <laughs> Because it's green. Yeah, green things, like, I know they're healthy for you, but... We like salad. We do like salad. That's what we got for lunch today. Yeah, we did get salad. Well, I got pokey. Oh, that's true. We went to a salad. I got a fire pokey ball. It was also called fire pokey. Right. I think my favorite part was how mine was too spicy for me, which, like, is never a problem. Unless I'm eating, like, a ghost pepper or something. I love spicy. And then that guy came over to me and was like, did you not like it? Like, what happened? I was like, oh, it's just too spicy. And then he gave me a free coupon. We love free things. We love free things. (laughs) Shout out to Kent for teaching us how to get free things. Yeah, seriously. Apparently, it's going to Core Life. Shout out to Core Life. And not finishing your salad. (laughs) That was pretty good. I do love Core Life. Oh, another big thing in 2019, the Jonas Brothers got back together. Shout out to the Jonas Brothers. That should have been our first thing, I think. Yeah. Like, holy moly. That was one of the excuses for us to get together. Yes, that's was true. to go to their concert. And also watch the movie. Oh. Which brought them back together. Which brought them back together and made me cry. I yeah, I actually really cried. I, it was, like, very sad. Like, not like, oh my gosh, I'm crying. It was like, no, there are tears. Like, this is face. emotional. Like, yeah. It, yeah. It wasn't like I'm sobbing. It was just like, I love love. Yeah. That was a really fun day, too, going to that concert. And I think that was my first time, like, tailgating, really. Yeah. It, well, I'm from Pittsburgh, so it wasn't. Yeah. I just, like, tailgating. I've never really had friends from home that, like, do that. So it was fun to, like, be there with you guys and and when we met those random friends in a parking lot, that that they were like, like two spots over, and we're like, come over, hang out with us. They were the best. That was the most Kelly and Liana thing <laughs> that we've done this year, besides it was, this. It was so chill. Yeah, that was really fun. I had a good time. What a good kickback. And when Big Rob came out on stage. Oh, the crowd went wild. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. Shout it out to good. Big Rob. Shout out to Big Rob and making friends with Brian, who was dancing. That was awesome. Oh my awesome. gosh, he was so fun. Fun. Yeah, they were fun. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, let's settle this debate. When does Christmas start? The day after Thanksgiving? Oh. Or like mid December? Like, when can you safely start playing Christmas music and decorating and all things Christmas? Because you work at a church. Yeah. So Christmas is like, you know, I have three months this. in advance. Yeah. So let's settle this debate. Personally, I'm waiting until like the first, second week of December. Is that my procrastination? I don't know. But I think as far as, like, listening to Christmas music, I don't want to hear it the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You can start decorating. I think that's fine. We have a cat now. Surprise. I mean, clearly I decorated. We got a Christmas tree here. I made some wall-hanging thingies. Well, I didn't want my cat to, like, bring my tree down. So we set it up this weekend, which was fun. We have a fake tree because Mm -hmm. trees are so expensive this year. Like, what the heck? They are. But, um... Yeah, when does Christmas start for you? In your mind versus where you work? work. Okay, so I have a couple of thoughts. One okay. is that I was a former choir kid, so Christmas started when school started. It oh. starts, like, back in September because mm-hmm. you can have a couple weeks where you learn, like, just generic music. But really, you're just preparing for your Christmas concert. Um, what is that for you? Is it, like, beginning of December? Yeah, some, at yeah. some point around the holiday season, it kicks it off. So, and I was in show choir too, mm-hmm. which means you learn double Christmas music. So I legitimately still can't really listen to Christmas music because yeah, I think about all of the variations of that. Like, there are only a handful of Christmas songs. <laughs> Granted, artists are coming out with more and more recently, which is great. But yeah. the, the classics that you sing at all the choir concerts. I just wonder if there can ever be new Christmas songs. I, I feel like it's always going to be the classics. The classics, but like Christmas Shoes is now a classic. Oh, Shout out to Christmas to Shoes. I not to listen to that. The time. But, so I still don't really listen. Like, for me, Christmas music is like week before Christmas. Yeah. 
for work, I start thinking about Christmas right after Easter because it's like kind of the next big thing. Oh, that's true. Um, like I think our worship pastor and like senior pastor already had a series picked out kind of of like direction oh, of the, what they were Christmas doing season, yeah. by like March last year. Oh, dang. For this year? Mm-hmm. I didn't start moving on it until like a couple months ago, but yeah. they knew in their head what they wanted to do, mm-hmm. essentially. Because um, it's almost easier to recap it like right after in January and be like, okay, what do we want to change for next year? That's true. Well, for, it's still fresh on your mind. Yeah. For me personally, Christmas officially starts the day after Thanksgiving because I love Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a holiday about eating. So please give it the time of day, retail places. Yeah, right. Like, everyone loves to eat. Everyone should love Jesus, but like, it's more about Santa in the commercial world. Right. But everyone loves to eat for Thanksgiving. Um, so I would say I came back and decorated my apartment right after I got home from Thanksgiving. Well, you did have this beautiful Christmas tree. I did. Up. That I was had to lug it. That was, buying a Christmas tree made me, like, feel old. Granted, this I got is a gift right? to me. Shout out to Chris and Lori for gifting me this Christmas Without tree. Chris and Lori. But... I just really, like, it makes this place so warm and cozy at night when all the lights are out and it's just the Christmas tree and the glow of my TV watching a great movie, like, a a stellar movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, I will say that. Yeah. I think I agree with you, but historically I haven't loved Christmas. I think my favorite holiday is Easter, which, like, is a whole discussion on its own. But I haven't loved Christmas just because there's so much going on in my family that, yeah. like, it's just hard for me to, like, keep it all together. But everyone's getting older, and there's new traditions, and I think I'm, like, looking forward to, like, finding a new routine. Mm-hmm. So I've been finding myself, like, humming a lot of Christmas music. Whoa. And, like, that's a big deal for me, for, like, everyone who knows me. Yeah. You <laughs> so don't do that. that. No, I don't. What is joy? <laughs> <laughs> what is Christmas joy? But it's really This fun. is 25. Yeah, right. <laughs> You change all your things that you like. Mm -hmm. All right, so at least we've got that one figured out. But um, I think recently I went to my first, like, Christmas party, like, work party. Oh, yeah. Me too. I was so excited for it, and I don't know why. I think it's because it was, like, my first time feeling like an adult. And I was definitely, like, let down in a way. I don't know what the word is, but, like... Definitely did not measure up to my expectations. Yeah. Not because it was a bad party, but Your I like I don't know. Expectations were violated. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what I was like expecting. Like I I don't know. Like I don't know what I was looking for, but I was like, eh, this is fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I will say I love my coworkers and everything, but our Christmas party was on like a Friday at lunchtime. Was it an afternoon? Yeah. Yeah, it was afternoon. And um it was just like I work with these people all the time, and it's great, and I love them. But when you get us in a social setting, you, like, kind of have to work a different muscle. Like, you have to think about, like, okay, what am I going to talk to this person about that's not on your to-do list at work? Yeah. Because it's supposed to be for fun. And for some people, it's so easy. I'm like, Anna, shout out to Anna, my office mate. What up, Anna? Um, Heard so much about your girlfriend. (laughs) Because I talk to her all day long. And we know each other so well. Like, we're, like, besties at work. Yeah. And so hanging out with her at a Christmas party is, like, us just hanging out in their just office. Hanging out, yeah. But there are some people I don't, like, see very often because my work is very come and go. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, wait, what was the last thing that I could ask them about in your social life? And it's just really, like, a cocktail hour. Like, you just yep. have to, like, think until you make through it. Through all these people because you got to ask the same questions to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I get Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I think that's been funny, just, like, growing up, you know? Yeah. These are, like, normal of things. passage, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think the last thing I want to talk about, because if we're talking about 2019 in review, I think that everybody and their sister getting married oh. deserves a shout-out. We are clearly not two of those people. <laughs> And I just feel like this year, like, I think this past weekend, I knew four people that got engaged. Mm -hmm. Super happy for them. But, like, holy moly, this year was full of weddings, engagements, babies. 
This is 25. This, this is, is this is 25 three years post grad from a Christian college. I think that needs to be. Yeah, it's like the second round of people who yeah. like we're still dating after college or finally mm-hmm. getting around to getting married, which honestly, so happy for them. Oh my gosh, yeah. We loved going to um, Alex and Mel's wedding to see all of our friends. Shout like, out to Mel and Alex. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Powerhouse, full force. What up, Alex? What up, Mel? <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to all of those people getting married and getting invited to their weddings. Yeah. But it's also like, oh goodness, Facebook explodes. I know. It's so true. I saw this tweet. I think my friend sent it to me. And oh, it's Casey. What up, Casey? What up, Casey? <laughs> and she, it was like a tweet, and it was like I think the caption was Facebook when you go to a Christian college, and it was just a screen recording of someone scrolling, and it, and was, it was engagement, marriage, enga- I'm, marriage, engagement. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks like my mm-hmm. Facebook. Just with some babies sprinkled in. I do appreciate all of, like, the secret photography that happens or, like, they have an engagement photo shoot afterwards because it looks, yeah. like, they're pretty photos. Yeah. Like, I applaud the artists. I know. capture those moments. I just feel like that deserved a shout-out because if we're talking about 2019 interview, that's pretty much mm-hmm. what happened. <laughs> everyone got married and everyone got engaged. For it's sure. been fun. Super happy for that. Do you have anything yeah. else you can think of? I don't know. Do you want to move on to, like, Babe? Oh, babe yeah. Of the, babe of the Year. Yeah. So, Chad and JT have these segments, for those of you who don't know, um, that they do, like, Babe of the Year and a couple other things that we'll get into, but, or Babe of the Week. And so, we wanted to do Babes of the Year and just... The segments for the year. Yeah. We just want to make sure we're hitting all of 2019. All of 2019. Where our heart truly lies. Yep. All right, Kylie, who's your babe of the year? Okay. My babe of the year is Chrissy Teigen. Oh, now, let me get into it. Okay. Why she's my babe it's of the year. It's a chick. Nice. It's a chick because she's just really stolen my heart and my stomach, for sure. Please explain. As an adult, I recognize I don't have very many hobbies because, like, all of college, you Did are studying, uh-huh. hanging out with friends. So I'm like, let's make my new hobby something useful. Okay. Let's cook through a cookbook. Kind of like Julie and Julia from that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where she cooked through Julia Child's cookbook. And I never really understood, like, why she so intimately cared about Julia Child's. But I now <laughs> I understand completely. Because I went to Target, because we both love Target. Sure do. And I looked at a bunch of cookbooks. And Chrissy Teigen's was my favorite. Granted, when I bought it, didn't know much about her except she was like kind of funny, married to John Legend, who is a legend. He definitely is. So I bought this cookbook because it has a great section on sandwiches, it has a great section on soups, it has a great section on Thai food. Before this cookbook, I have never cooked Thai food, but now I cook it at least once a week. And you're dang good at it. And I'm good at it. People think. I'm bringing in takeout Thai food when I take it into work. And I'm like, no, I made this last night. And they're like, how did you make that? And I'm like, I read a cookbook. Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen. So all of her recipes are literally dank. Like, they're the best recipes I've ever had. They make me so stoked. I love having dinner parties now. Had my first dinner party this year. That was monumental. Oh, fire. Nice. Um, But why Chrissy Teigen is my babe of the year is because not only does she make fire food, she's very funny on Twitter, and she keeps it real. She does keep it she real. She complains a lot, but I enjoy it because it's like the fun kind of complaining, like the complaining I do. And it's like things you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your inner monologue. And found out she went to culinary school. Like, Food Network sent her to culinary school, so not only are her recipes good that I thought might have been written by other people, they're actually written by her. That's awesome. She also released, <laughs> I was like, keep going, stop me anytime. No, 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 this is um, what we're here for. For those of you watching, you don't have to go and buy her cookbook. I would 100% recommend it. It but is very aesthetically pleasing. She launched a website this year just for cooking and a cook line, like a baking line and stuff. So if you oh, are okay. looking to fill your kitchen with like gadgets and slash or pots and pans and all of those fun things in the kitchen, you can buy Chrissy Teigen's line. Oh. Um, 
And she's super helpful, and she's also, like, great on social media because... And she's beautiful. Yeah, she's beautiful. Like, top it all off, she's beautiful and funny. Like, yeah. who doesn't want to be that and a good cook? I know, right? That's awesome. Solid. Thanks. Who's yeah. your baby of the year? My baby of the year is Dak Shepard. Mmm, shout out Dak Shepard. <laughs> what up, Dak Shepard? I know you're listening to this. <laughs> so, he's married to Kristen Bell, and... Um, he also has his own podcast called Armchair Expert. and I'm like um, singing the song in my head right I know, now. right? <laughs> no one wants me to sing that loud. And his co-host is uh, Monica Padman. And um, not only is he super handsome, tall, handsome, love the flow. He's got a great flow. Um, I think his, his podcast has kept me company like all year so I've been in school and I drive like 600 miles a week minimum I'd yeah. say and um he's just been keeping me company I love listening to he interviews um celebrities and um mostly people in tv and I think it's been really cool to like hear um his outlook on life and he has just a really awesome um kind of perspective I don't always agree with things that he has to say but I think that's the cool part is that I don't have to but I can still respect him just like he respects other people with different um outlooks on life um he is also very funny um and my favorite part of his podcast is the um fact check Mm -hmm. because he just like spits random things out during his podcast that like he knows he needs to like fact check himself because he's probably just saying something random that he thought up and I love love the self-awareness um I think it's really fun getting to watch him like root for Kristen and his kids and like he loves his friends and I think I want to be like that I think you are like oh thanks Kelly thanks but he's just, like, he's always rooting for you. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, he's my babe of the year. Yeah, what a good babe of the year. Dad yeah. Shepard. He's pretty cool. 10 out of 10. He's also, yeah, he's really funny. <laughs> Would recommend that podcast. Aside yeah. from going deep with Chad and JT. Armchair expert. Look it up. Top two. Top, top two. two. Honestly, yeah, top two. So, uh, who's your legend of the year? My legend of the year is my car. Oh. My 2003 Honda CRV. If you see a tan Honda CRV, it's probably going to be driven by someone, a female over the age of, I'd say, 65, with the exception of myself. That's like your soul age, though. Yeah. And my my joint age. <laughs> <laughs> All my creaking and cracking. But, um, Honestly, my car, I don't I don't need my car because the only car that I named got totaled and mm. so my brother will always say, Never name your car. That's how it gets like crashed basically. But I love my car. It hasn't ever left me stranded. Um it doesn't even get mad at me when I go a thousand miles or so over my oil change. But I did just get my car new tires, so So it got a Christmas present. What? It got a Christmas present. Yeah, it did. It did. So, my legend of the year is my car because I've driven so many miles and we've gotten to know each other really well. So, yeah, yeah. you spent more time with that car than, like, some of your friends. Yeah, that's a thousand percent accurate. <laughs> yeah. So, I think it's funny because I listen to my podcast on my aux cord, but it's the aux cord that inserts into the tape <laughs> But you know what? You always hear people talk about their old cars that, like, don't have AC or don't have heat. But mine has both. And an aux cord. Yeah, it does. That's impressive. Kelly, who's your legend of the year? Okay, get ready. You know I don't get sentimental often. No. So, I just thought I would take a moment to be a little sentimental. Okay. I think my legend of the year is Kent. So, for those of you who don't know... Sometimes I call my parents by their first names out of Sometimes respect for them. Sometimes all the time. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. 90% of the time. Uh, Kent and Diane. Shout out Diane. What up, Diane? What up, uh, Kent? <laughs> <laughs> but Kent, I think, is my legend of the year because this is the nice. year he retired. Yeah. And if you know my dad, he's a lot like me. He's also a workaholic. Yeah, and he was able to do that and still be able to provide for our family. And now he has this whole new life. 
Like, yeah. I think he is a new man. I've taken to calling him retired Kent officially because he just takes the time to hang out with people and really invest in them. And he loves his yard and has taken up new hobbies. And his plants. And his plants. Our house looks like a jungle. Uh-huh. Um, but now one of my favorite times of day is when I get kind of stressed at work. And on my lunch break, I like used to go and call Diane, but now I call retired Kent. And he just like brightens my day. I'm like, hey, hey Kent, what did you do today? And he's like, uh, I loaded the dishwasher and hit start. And I'm like, if your life is that simple, like, that is goals. Like, my dad makes me want to retire tomorrow. Right. Because he just does what he wants with his time, but he's doing all the things he loves. And uh, I also love talking business with him. So I, like, get to talk to him about my work. Mm -hmm. And he gives me great advice and mentors me. Um, Retired Kent is a man. I think of when I, like, when I think of retired Kent, I just think of him as this, this like, grin on his face <laughs> with a Hawaiian button down on. Yeah. Because, I don't know, that's just, like, that's what I think of him as, because he's just free and easy going. And he's always, like, cracking jokes. Like, he's, like, oh goofy gosh, yeah. now. Which, yes. like, not that he wasn't goofy in the past, he was just, like, had stress for work. So The world has definitely been lifted from his shoulders. Yeah, it's so fun. He also installed a new office upstairs, so like he's is huge. still working, and it's like all custom. It's incredible. Yeah, Good love for retired him. Kent. Love him. Who is or oh, this one's good, Kelly. What was your beef of twenty nineteen? Oh, your beef of the year. Beefs are like hard for me because I don't get angry very often. Um, but I think my beef of the year, which like is a new concept for me, is just the word adulting. Oh, that's a good one. Because hate that word. Now I used to love it. Like I was like all for like, yeah, I'm adulting and all this stuff, but now I realize like maybe this is me turning twenty five, but like <laughs> this, this is, is just life. Like mm -hmm. I'm learning new things, you learn every day. Um, I have new responsibilities. Like you have to do your laundry and clean your apartment, or you're not gonna have clean clothes. And no one apartment. else is gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, like you. it's not adulting. Yeah. Like it's just being a human. And every time people use it around me, it's usually people of the older generation, mm. and it seems like a little derogatory. Like it seems like an insult, and I don't appreciate that. So I think we should kill this whole word word of adulting, and like twenty somethings need to stop using it. I think it definitely takes away from the things that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just adulting today. I'm like, no, you're doing things that you have to do to stay afloat. Like, this is just what you should be doing. Yeah, you know? like, I'm adulting today. Usually Sundays are, if you would use that word, they would be my adulting days. But instead, I'm like, no, this is just Sunday getting ready for the week. Yeah. Like, I'm going to the grocery store. Yeah. Also, don't go to the grocery store on Sundays. Go on Tuesday nights. Oh, that's good. It's that's really a good fun. Tip. Yeah. Um, so who's your beef of the year? So my beef of the year is with I-283. So I don't know how far it goes, but I pick it up at Mannheim Pike in Lancaster, and I take it all the way to the exchange of um, 83, I-83, and the um, I-76, I which is the turnpike gotcha. in Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania turnpike. That's a long time. Yeah, I really hate it. So my beef is with the fact that they can't get their crap together. I have spent this whole year in road work, like full on road work. I started the year with having to take, you know, my time behind all of these like construction people. And also I have to get onto the other side of the interstate to take an express lane on the whole other side because they're working on one lane over here. And then they fixed that, so I drove the summer, you know, on the right side of the road, and then they started it on this side of the road. So I, like, you both sides that. have been worked on. I mean, it's much nicer now, but, like, what the heck, man? And not only that, every, no one knows how to drive in road work, apparently. So there's always accidents, there's always traffic, and I've had to leave, my school is only 45 minutes away from where I live, but I have to leave an hour out oh. because I know without a doubt I'm going to get stuck in either an accident or traffic. I've, like, there have been, like, three or four times that I've gotten to school, like, two hours late because of an accident. Oh, 
and that's my beef. That's, that's a good beef. Get your crap together. Yeah, get your crap Pen together. Pen dot. Yeah, so that's been irritating. Yeah. Um. So now time for the segment of fave quote of the year. It can be whatever you want. So can Pen, I share? What's your favorite yeah. quote of the year? Um, something that I have been obsessed with since it came out was the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. One because love to be a comedian. Two, I just relate to Maisel a lot, Midge. Um, so I have two quotes. I kind of cheated, but they're both from the same person. So that's fine. Count. One of the quotes is, "The world is full of disappointments, and sometimes people let you down, but you just can't run away." Wow, it was just that deep. deep. Because my instinct is when people make me mad or I'm upset about something is I just want to run away. But Midge has shown me you can't just run away. You have to be there for your friends. I like that. Um, The other one is, it just made me laugh, bald men can be attractive with the right hat. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, roasting the bald people. Roasting the bald people. People without the flow. My dad's bald. (laughs) <laughs> but he has a rockin' beard. Yeah, he does. He does have hair on his face. So that's I like him. it. Nice. And it just like describes my outlook on life. It's like work with what you got. Make it. Make anything good, even if it's a bald man. Like Buy it. a nice hat. Sweet. Yeah. What's your quote of the year? So my favorite quote is from a movie. She's the man, and it has always been my favorite movie because I just think it's hilarious. But the quote is, if you can't join them, beat them. <laughs> and I just think it's so funny because, you know, it's just a funny quote. Like, in the movie, it's because she can't join her team. So she dresses up as her brother and right. beats the team she couldn't join. But I think for me, it's just funny because, like, you don't always have to join the majority. But, like, you can be better than everybody else in your own way. So I think it's cool. Yeah. And it's also just a very funny movie. Amanda Bynes is super inspirational. Yeah. I can quote that whole movie probably. That's a talent. That's like your party yeah. trick. I, it, it is, honestly. Yeah. Um, so our segment that we wanted to implement is called What's Good? What's Good? So Kelly, what's good? Okay. So my favorite thing about this past year is that Main Street, which is like right behind my apartment, I say it's my backyard, um, is getting poppin'. Like, yeah. there's a coffee shop, there's now a sushi restaurant, there's a poke bowl place, there's a pizza place. Um, the coffee shop is kind of like my second office, and I get to go in, and I know all of the workers there, and I get to say what's good to them. Um, what up, Capital Joe's? What up, Capital Joe's? Shout out to Capital Joe's. Yeah. And keeping us I've, caffeinated. I love being able to walk there. Like, it's faster for me to walk from my apartment building to Capital Joe's than for me to drive. So, sweet. That's pretty good. Getting you outside. Eco friendly. If I had a scooter, I'd use that. But Scoot. Don't have a scooter. Yeah, because we're still in Central PA. Yeah. Things take about five years to so get like, here. Maybe 12 years from now we'll have scooters. Maybe. What's good with you? I have two things. So, this year I've been super thankful for Marco Polo. Yes, shout out Marco Polo. Shout out to Marco Polo. Not the Explorer, but the app. Or the swimming game. Oh yeah, definitely not that one. Um, But it's an app. It's a video app. I don't even know what you would call it. But you can basically leave... FaceTime video calls to each other mm-hmm. and um, you and I I'm pretty sure you're the only one I use it for oh you're the only one I yeah. use it for I've tried to use it with other people and it, it doesn't, just work. doesn't work but I think it's been really cool to keep us like connected because we don't even text that much anymore no I think like the last text from you was super random yeah it was like something that was like midnight and I couldn't like polo you so. yeah exactly and I think it's like kept us connected and also you don't have to text as much that's probably where all my memory on my phone is going to marco polo 
Yeah, probably. So Marco Polo has been good this year. And the most important thing that's been good this year and always are my siblings. Shout out to my brother and my sister. <laughs> hey, Gabe. Shout, Shout out, Gabe. Annalise. Annalise. What up? What up? Yeah, my siblings, I was just thinking the other day, we were setting up the Christmas tree, and I was like, wow, I'm so lucky to be able to be best friends with my sister and my brother. My sister's six years younger than me, and my brother's three years, and I've just, like, gradually gotten to know my sister better in the past year, because we have, we work together now, and so she's not a kid anymore, you know? Right, yeah. Um, I've always just been like, at least get in the back seat, like when I drive her <laughs> places, because like she's just always been my baby sister, and so um, you're like, where's the car seat? What? I know, right? <laughs> at least where's the sister seat? But I'm super, super blessed that I have siblings that I like that I get along with, yeah. and we want to be around each other. So my siblings are Marco Polo. That's that's good. Yeah. This year, I have one more thing. Okay, go ahead. So. Um, I have a great girl gang here in the Mechanicsburg. It's uh, on the sign in Mechanicsburg. It says a great place to live. Oh. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but I would say you'll find great people in Mechanicsburg. Sweet. So I get to hang out with them like all the time, and we go on like random runs to like Rudders, which is a weird gas station around here. Yeah. Or, like, do random crafts together. Um, I think there's going to be a winter solstice party on Saturday night. Wow, squad just up. Just because, like, yeah. that'll be fun. We just love chilling together, hanging out, doing fun things, eating great food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Shout out to my girl gang here okay. in Mechanicsburg. Glad to hear You're it. always an honorary member, though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when I'm not working, my right? Three yeah. jobs. <laughs> Your seven jobs. Yeah. Do you have Benny anything Hanna. else to say? Kelly, um, I don't know. To sum up 2019. 2019. I would just be like, I think I would describe 2019 as a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Kind of scary at times. Yeah, definitely. But always along for the ride. Yeah. It's what great. are you looking forward to in 2020? I think 2020 is going to be a big year for me personally because I'll be starting my clinicals for my occupational therapy assistant degree and graduating and taking my exam and hopefully passing on the first time and then I think the biggest hurdle for me is going to be choosing where to find a job so I'm looking forward to seeing like what the next six months and the next seven months and eight months just like taking it a step at a time and seeing where life takes me and I definitely learned the power of kind of just living in the moment, and yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, 2020, I think it's going to be the year of vision. Okay. I don't know what that means, it just, I just think it's funny, the eye doctor thing, like, 2020 vision, get it? Oh my god, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good dad joke, wasn't it? That was pretty really good, okay, I'm going to be proud. Thank you. <laughs> Is there something specific you're looking forward to, or you're just ready to rumble? I think I'm just ready to rumble. Yeah. I'm like rocking and rolling for 2020. Sweet. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Festivus, man. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for um, listening. If you've made it this far, we appreciate it. Um, If you haven't, like, that's okay. You won't see this. Yeah. That's okay. But we are going to go get dinner now. Yeah, I'm hungry. So... Let's get out of here. Um, Chad and JT, if you have watched or listened to this, thank you so much. We'd love to hit you up, hang out sometime. If we're ever in California. No, we'll make a trip to California. (laughs) Although we just heard that you were in Delaware, and that's where I'm from. So next time that happens, where you fight for the right to party, I'd love to come. Yeah, on the East Coast. This is where we are. Um, Yeah, hit us up. We hope you have a great and wonderful day. That's how I say goodbye on all I my know. phone calls. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for creating such a fire podcast for us to bond over. Yeah, it's been really fun. We yeah. get to chat about things. So, yeah. We might do this more often. Who knows? Let's just keep the living room set up like this. <laughs> yeah, you guys should see this. This is not how my living room works. No. Very but, not feng shui. You know? But yeah, let's go eat dinner. Yeah. Shout out to Evergreen. Ready? Bye. Bye.
So fire. <laughs> <laughs> Leona and